Hello YouTube, welcome to howtomakecanvas.info. In this video, I will show you step by step how to create a pillar candle. Pillar candles, like these here, are made by pouring melted paraffin wax into a mold. Then, when the wax is solidified, the finished candle is unmolded and can be burnt as is, without any support. So without further ado, let's get started. To make pure candles, we need the following supplies. As always, you will need a double boiler, essential to melt the wax. Enough paraffin wax to fill the mold and some more. Here I have 450 grams or a pound of wax already in the melting pot. About 10% or 50 grams of stearic acid or stearine. A mold that can be store-bought or homemade, depending on what you have. For this project, I will be using a 70mm diameter aluminium mold. A length of flat braid wick, perfect to make pillar candles, whose size should match the diameter of the mold you will be using. Mold sealer or plumbus putty to prevent the liquid paraffin wax from escaping the mold when poured. Your work area will be covered with wax paper, like here, to catch any accidental wax spill. Essential as well, a reliable thermometer, easy to read, so ideally a digital one. A stirring stick to mix the stearic acid and the candle dye with the paraffin, and it can be a simple wooden kebab stick. A long needle to make the relief holes. Again, it can be just a metal kebab stick. A wick holder to keep the wick straight and centered. Some candle dye, your choice of color. I went with black for this project. A pair of scissors to cut and trim the wick. When you have everything handy, put the melting pot containing the paraffin wax in your double boiler. And while it melts, Let's start preparing the mold. Lay the mold flat on the table and cut a piece of wick the same length of the mold plus 2 cm on each side. Cut the wick and put it aside for now. We'll come back to it later when the paraffin is completely melted. Fast forward and the paraffin wax is now ready. Let's add 10% of stearic acid, little by little. And use the stirring stick to blend it into the wax. Keep stirring until the stearine is perfectly dissolved into the paraffin. The temperature of the wax is on the high side, so it should not take long. The time has come to prime your wick. This simply means that you will plunge it into the liquid paraffin and leave it there for about one minute until all the air stuck between the threads of the wick has been replaced with the paraffin as the air bubbles at the surface indicate. When the air bubbles have gone, after one minute or so, you can fish the wick out with the stirring stick and lay it flat on the sheet of waxed paper. Then, without waiting, pick the wick up by each end and stretch it so that it will be as straight as possible when it hardens. There you go. Give it some time to set. You can turn off your double boiler for the time being. At this stage, the temperature of the wax ranges between 85 and 19 degrees Celsius. It is time to remove the melting pot from the double boiler. Use an old kitchen towel to wipe the pot. This will prevent any water from mixing with the wax when you pour later on. At this temperature, 
the wax is too hot to pour into the mold, but it's the ideal temperature to add your choice of dye. Go easy on the dye, it is extremely concentrated and a small amount is enough to color a large amount of paraffin wax. Add the dye flake by flake, or drop by drop if you use liquid dye. It's much easier to add more if necessary than remove it. Stir it thoroughly especially if you use dye flakes or dye blocks. It is essential that the dye is perfectly dissolved in the wax if you want your finished candle to have a uniformed color. Meanwhile, your primed wick had plenty of time to set. As you can see, it is now hard as a stick and that's exactly what we want. You can now place it into the mold. Turn the mold upside down. Remove any excess of wax from the ends of the wick and thread it through the hole at the bottom of the mold. Fold the last 2 cm of wick against the bottom of the mold. This will help keep the wick in place for what follows. Now is the time to plug the bottom of the mold with some mold sealer. Take a piece of mold sealer, about the size of your thumb's nail, and apply it over the wick. Make sure you cover both the wick and the wick hole. Press down on the whole surface of the mold sealer and try to get it as flat as possible without compromising the waterproofness of it all. Now turn the mold the right way up. Take the wick holder, open it up and catch the wick between its two halves, making sure the wick is both towed and perfectly centered. There you go. Check the wax temperature. 70 degrees is the perfect pouring temperature. Pour slowly and in a constant flow to avoid creating air bubbles in the mold. And fill the mold to the brim or nearly so. So that's done. We will now give the wax of this first pour plenty of time to cool off. After about two hours, a shrink hole has appeared between the sides of the mold and the wick. And to get rid of any air pockets that may have formed under the surface of the wax, it is essential to create a series of relief holes. To that effect, take your wicking needle and drive it vertically through the candle at the deepest point of the shrink hole, about halfway between the sides of the mold and the wick. Drive the needle almost all the way down, but without touching the bottom of the mold or you will damage what will become the top of your candle. Repeat this at different places around the wick until you have a total of 5 to 6 relief holes. And don't worry too much if some of the half liquid wax ends up in the shrink hole. It will melt when you proceed to the second pour.
Now turn your heat plate back on and place the melting pot containing the remain of the wax back in a double boiler. Once the wax is melted entirely, turn off the heat, remove the melting pot and as always wipe it dry so that no water can mix with the wax when you pour it into the mold. Before you proceed to pouring, use your needle again to go through every relief hole a couple of times just to make sure they didn't collapse during the cooling process. When done, check that the wax temperature is still close to 75 degrees and start pouring. Pour slowly and don't go over the initial level of the candle. You will notice that a fair amount of wax disappears into the relief holes to fill the air pockets hidden at the heart of the candle. That is exactly what you want to happen. The second pour is over. You can now remove the wick holder or leave it there if you prefer. Now firmly hold the mold with one hand without moving it and with your other hand gently tap the sides of the mold to help any remaining air bubbles escape to the surface while the wax is still fluid. Now we wait until the wax cools off completely. When that's the case, put the melting pot in the double boiler one last time and let the wax fully melt. Turn off the double boiler, remove the melting pot and wipe it dry. Then proceed to the third and last pour, still without going over the initial level. Now let the candle cool off until the mold is cold to the touch. Wait at least 12 hours before going on to the next step. Using the scissors or a Stanley knife, cut the wick level with the surface of the wax. Turn the mold over and remove as much mold sealer as you can from the wick and from the bottom of the mold. Apply some pressure on the sides of the mold and your finished candle should pop out without protest. There you go. Place it on your work table. You may notice that it is neither stable nor level. This is due to differences in wax level on the base of the candle, but it's an easily solved problem. To level the base of a candle, you need a piece of aluminum foil, a small pan and your heat plate. Apply the aluminium foil to the bottom of the pan. You need to ensure the foil is flat and doesn't move inside the pan. Now turn the heat plate on. And when the aluminium foil is hot, place the base of the candle against it and gently push the candle down while making circles on the foil. Make sure you keep the candle perfectly vertical at all times if you don't want the finished candle to lean. When you decide the base is level and the candle is stable, you're almost done. 
don't forget to turn off the heat plate. The last step is to finish the surface of your candle. To do that, use an old pantyhose. When a molded candle comes just out of its mold, differences in color are visible. It is generally caused by small differences in temperature of the mold and the wax when the first pour is done, or the presence of drafts in your work area. Wipe the whole surface of your candle, top included, with the pantyhose. After a couple of minutes, you will notice that the color of the wax is now perfectly uniformed. The last step is to trim the wick to a length of about 8 mm. Use the scissors so you don't risk damaging the top of your candle. Your pillow candle is finished. Get rid of the last tiny imperfections with the pantyhose wound around your finger. A very nice result. Thank you for staying till the end and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and be the first to know when I publish a new video. Happy candle making and hope to see you soon!